Hey, welcome to Vortex Garage. You know, in one of our last videos, we talked a little bit about how we wanted to do some tool reviews for you to kind of give you an idea about what we think of some of the tools that you see us use in the shop in our videos. Now, one thing that we pointed out that was interesting was all of the stuff, at least in the meantime, unless we mention otherwise, are tools that we've purchased ourselves or received as gifts from people that we know. So they're not manufacturer provided tools for review. They're things that we've actually purchased, spent money on, and we can kind of give you an honest opinion of whether or not we regret spending that money or are happy in our investment. Another feature of this, a lot of these tools, as you can see by these dead blow hammers here, are things that we've had for a couple years and we've used pretty extensively. So we're going to be giving you an idea of their overall durability and how they work in real situations, not just a weekend of work that we got something in the mail and we took it out of the package, looked at it, and told you how it felt. We're going to be able to tell you how we feel these have held up, how durable they've been in, in several cases. So let's go ahead and start off by talking a little bit about these dead blow hammers. Now, if you've got a set of these, you know what their worth is, and we can talk a little bit about these particular ones from Tecton. But if you've not got a set of these, or maybe you're kind of out there trying to find gift ideas for someone you know who likes tools, and you've not seen a set of these bright orange hammers in their toolbox, well, you'll be interested to learn a little bit about the dead blow hammer and why it's pretty versatile. Now, I know a lot of people kind of think about hammers and working on cars as two things. Well, first of all, if you're bringing the hammer out when you're working on a car, you're doing something wrong. That's absolutely not true. There are many cases specifically with uh, working on suspension components where using a hammer is a necessary item to do the actual job and is part of the service procedures. It's not just hitting on something that you don't want to unscrew or break it, break it off. So you can, don't worry about that. The uh, second thing is you might think that a hammer is a very simple tool. It's usually some sort of steel or metal. It's got a handle, an anvil end or a hitting end, and you whack stuff with it and that's it. Well, like many simple tools in our toolboxes, hammers are extremely complex and there's a lot of different variations with very specific job types. Take for instance, these right here. This is a two and a half pound metal hammer. Then we've got this 10 pound hammer, which is actually kind of like a sledge head uh, on a small handle. This is your proverbial BFH as it's known. And uh, well, they're very handy for certain things. You get a lot of force behind this one, obviously. This one's a little bit easier to handle and works well in certain situations. You also have like rubber mallets though that you can hit things and they're non-marring, things that are very fragile. You might have claw hammers that you use for carpentry work. Uh, you might have bodywork hammers for shaping metal. Uh, you might have um, ball peen hammers. A um, lot of different things out there, a lot of different types of hammers. They all have very specific purposes. And that's just the same with these dead blow hammers. So if you don't know what these are, let's talk really quickly about what a dead blow hammer is and some of the great things that make them great tools to have. A dead blow hammer is usually made of plastic and you're probably thinking, what do I want a plastic hammer for? Well, that's actually a really good thing. These are a semi non-marring surface. I say that because they're not as soft as a rubber mallet, so you can't use them on you know, really light polished stuff to kind of tap it in. This is more for working on, like say an aluminum piece or something that's a little bit fragile. You hit that with a big steel hammer, you're gonna have some issues with it. Um, but you do kind of have that semi non-marring aspect of it. So you can hit things and they're, they're gonna cause a lot less damage. But one of the key features of a dead blow hammer is the fact that the head is actually hollow and filled with either sand or something like lead shot or some sort of shot material. And if you listen, if I stop rambling for a little bit, you'll hear. You kind of hear that in there shaking around. That's the key feature of a dead blow hammer. Now, what that does is as you swing the hammer back and start bringing it forward, that lead shot or whatever it is is going to go to the back of the tool. And as you swing forward, it'll stay back there due to the inertia. And as you hit the surface that you're hammering on, that inertia will transfer forward and give a little bit of extra force. And it'll also help absorb the reverse shock that you get when you hit something which makes them a little more stable. So you basically get three things from a plastic dead blow hammer. A semi non-marring surface, you get the extra shock of that lead shot coming down for good transfer of, of what you're hammering on. And, uh, and then the third thing, 
you get a lot less kind of shock back and, and a little bit more stability on the things you're hammering. So these are ideal tools when you want that extra shock on what you're hitting to break it loose. You want to not damage the surface and maybe there's some fragile things nearby. You don't want to have the hammer slip off or get out of control on you. That is what makes a dead blow hammer very useful. So a good example, I can kind of push these off to the side. This is probably not going to be a very good visual, but I've got this uh, little aluminum piece here. This is actually a water neck uh, on, for a four liter WJ motor. As you can see, the side broke off. I did that when I was installing it. And believe me, I was actually installing at two specifications. I was probably about halfway through the torque value doing them either way. And these are only like 15 foot pounds or something. And it, it was funny when it snapped, I had, I felt I was just past finger tight. So it must've been ready to go. But anyway, if I were to take this metal hammer, I'm not going to hit it very hard because I don't want to break this piece and I don't have my eye protection on. But if I were to tap it, again, this may not be a very good visual, but you would feel in the hammer handle and you'd feel on the piece itself how there's the force being transferred to the piece and then the shock of the hammer. And there's even a little bit of marring on the surface. You can kind of feel there's a little dent there now. A piece like this cast aluminum, if I were to hit this hard enough with it, I could risk cracking and breaking it just like that ear broke. Something like this, the reason I pulled this one out is it's proof that it's a very fragile piece, especially as, as this aluminum can get brittle with this cast aluminum. Hitting it with a hard metal hammer like this, you can risk damaging that. Now, of course, you're probably wanting to tell me, hey, you're not using a hammer to break off a water neck usually, and that is true. I'm just using it for demonstration purposes. But a good example being, I don't have one handy, let's take the Mountaineer for example. Like a lot of new cars, the Mountaineer is using aluminum uh, control arms. So those are cast aluminum pieces. They're not steel uh, control arms. So when you wanna break a ball joint loose, a lot of people make the mistake of taking a big metal hammer like this, like they used to do in the old days, and whack the side of that control arm to break that ball joint loose. Well, you do that on one of those cast aluminum control arms, you're gonna fatigue that metal. And if you don't break it while you're hitting it with this hammer while you're working on it, you may risk actually cracking or f um, fatiguing or fracturing that metal. And that can manifest itself in the worst way possible, which is actually failing later down the road as you're driving. And that's not, that's not something you wanna have happen. So that again goes back to what we talked about earlier, always check your service manual for the exact procedures because doing something like that can cause a serious problem. But using a hammer like this can cause a problem there. Using something like a dead blow hammer is a safer alternative. I'm not saying that you should take a dead blow hammer to your aluminum uh, cross members, your aluminum control arms. Again, I want you to check your service manuals, but that goes to show you something like this dead blow hammer is, is gonna be a lot less marring and damaging to this piece. So let's take our biggest one. We're gonna do the same trick. We're gonna hit this. Okay, now what I feel there is a lot more control than I had with the metal hammer. As you can see, as the shot transfers down, the head of that hammer, it rests on the piece a lot easier. So I feel that I get more control with this. I don't have the marring of the surface and I feel like a good amount of that shock has been transferred into the piece. So if this was something I was trying to break loose, I'd have more success doing it. Um, again, this is probably not the best example just because you wouldn't take a big piece like that and uh, a water neck like this and hit it with a big hammer. But a good example, the transfer case on the Mountaineer that we, we just took the transmission out, uh, to get the transfer case off when I had installed it the last time, I used a little bit of gasket cinch around that little ceiling piece uh, that connects it to the transmission. And that had actually, you know, obviously glued itself a little bit. So it was a little hard to pull the transfer case off. I ended up using, I think this medium one, came in behind, gave a couple whacks on the transfer case that gave enough shock to kind of break that loose and I was able to pop the transfer case off easily. I would not have wanted to take one of these metal hammers and hit that brittle cast aluminum case of that transfer case. The last thing I want to do is crack that, chip it, mar it, or break it. Something like a dead blow hammer is a lot safer alternative for a job like that. So honestly, that's probably the example I should have used even more than the control arm because there's other methods for getting those aluminum control arms off. But those cast aluminum parts like that transfer case, the dead blow hammer was the proper tool to use. This, this metal hammer would have been risky. So 
that's really where they come into play. So again, three things. You've got your semi-non-marring surface, you've got your transfer through the, of inertia through the shot that's inside, and then of course you have the stability that you gain from that and the lack of shock that comes off of it. So very, very nice tools to have. So if you don't have a set of dead blow hammers, I think this is a great thing to add. If you're gift given for someone and you look in their toolbox and don't see a set of these bright orange hammers, then go for it. So which one should you buy? There's a lot out there. Well, most of them are probably pretty good. Um, you, know, you can definitely pick them up and feel how they are. What I'd recommend, whatever you do buy, get a nice set of different sizes. Although you might think, we'll always go for the biggest one. And you can certainly look here, if you can bear the ends of them, I've had these for a couple years. The biggest one is the one I've used the most. So that's pretty clear. But there are cases where the big one's not gonna fit where you want a hammer. You're working on something a little more fragile. You want a little bit more control and a lighter hit. So you go to the 16 ounce, or I've got a 32 ounce here, or the big 48 ounce. So having that versatility and having the set of three is what you want to get. So Tecton does make a nice set. It comes in and you get all three of them in the kit. And uh, this is available through Amazon. I've been pretty happy with these. As you can see, yeah, there is some damage to the end, but these have been in use for several years. I've used them on some really big, tough jobs, hit some really hard surfaces, you know, stuff, dirty suspension components, stuff that has sharp edges. Um, you know, you name it, I've used it on them. And uh, by no means is this impacted or changed how they work. Obviously the type of plastic that they're all made out of is susceptible to kind of pick up grease stains a little bit. I could probably clean these with some pumice hand cleaner, but eh, they work, they're just used. But the good news is I've not had any issues with any cracks forming in the handles, any brittleness of the plastic. The plastic feels flexible enough that it's not gonna snap, it's not cracking but also it's not some flexible thing where the handles get floppy over time. These feel pretty much as good as they did as when I first got them. So that being said, if you're looking for a set of these, I can recommend the Tecton ones. I've been very happy with them. I'm sure most of the other makers that have them are pretty good as well, but uh, you can certainly check them out. If you're interested in these, you can get them off Amazon Prime and uh, we'll talk about them on our blog, vortex-garage.com. So anyway, that was our first tool review. As you can tell, these are kind of off the cuff. I'm just gonna sort of roll with them and go, try to keep the editing to a minimum. So if I say something I don't like, I might correct myself, but I'll try to make sure that I catch more in the uh, blog stuff. So if you're looking for more details, those may have them. Feel free to let me know what you think. And uh, you know, if you wanna share any experiences you've had with these particular tools, also feel free to do that. Again, we'll keep these coming. We hope you enjoy them. We hope you find them informative and we'll see you again soon. Thanks for tuning in.